There's a few factors as to the performance, or for the reasons for the performance, in my opinion. I mean, you know, everybody can see who's watched Lynn this season. They're a, they're a good technical team that can pass the ball. It's on a very difficult surface at the moment, that's for both sides. So I'll give them a little bit of leeway on that. that. I think it's, what, what frustrated me is, listen, with all due respect to the opposition, I felt we were going to win the game before I got here. And I told them, I wrote it on the wall, I wrote a little thing on the wall for their, for their eyes only. Um, and I felt we went about it in the beginning quite well. Got ourselves ahead, I thought it was coming. I was disappointed again for the goal because it's completely preventable. And that is a worry, not worry, but it's it's something that I've got to eradicate quickly because teams aren't having to do anything out of this world to score a goal. And when we're set and we're in shape, we don't, we don't look too bad defensively, but when we're stretched, we do. And that's, that's the first thing I'm gonna so sort of let you fellas know that I need to work at it a little bit more. But ultimately, ultimately look, look, I'm not being disrespectful to the opposition to say that you know we dominated the game. Um, we had the better chances. We had more chances. We made woodwork. The goalies made saves. You know, uh, the scoreline is possibly a little kind to them. I think, but but we were in a game. You know, we knew they were going to come here and fancy their chances. They beat them a couple of seasons ago, I believe, in the FA Cup. So there was a score to be settled. And to a man again, I can't fault the application. <laughs> But there's intelligence and then there's there's effort, sorry, and there's intelligent effort. And sometimes the intelligent bit isn't quite there. And I'm not blaming people before me because I know Ian was a very good coach and he's a proper football guy. So he ain't coached them to do them, make them decisions. It's individuals probably thinking they know better than I do. Well, they might do, but they won't be doing what I don't want them to do. It, it did seem a bit laboured at times. Do you think that was because of the, the, the difference in the, the two divisions in the sides and maybe a little bit of complacency early doors? Yeah, well, certainly not from the staff. That we weren't complacent. We knew, you know, they were in the game. As long as there's only one goal in it, they're in the game. Of course, for most of the game, there was there wasn't a goal in it. So from that point of view, they, we shouldn't have been. I mean, they, they showed enough to, to to show a goal threat. They showed a route from back to front. They, they, they tried to pass it at times. You know, they come and had a goal. They didn't. They didn't come here and try and hang in there. We made them um, drop away and let us dominate the ball, if you like. So you know, I'm frustrated because I think we, there's more to come from us. That's all. It's, I'm not frustrated with anybody individually. I'm just I'm having to shout and ball too much, and I don't want to. Um, I'd rather be much more calm and serene at the side of the pitch, but it's probably going to be a little while before I do that. It, it needed a spark, and, and Josh Barrett can certainly provide that spark. Yeah, I mean, listen, I'm not going to give him too much credit. It's Christmas, and there's puddings, and there's all sorts around. And look, at the end of the day, I'll say it one more time the guy is a talent. I've recruited him at two different football clubs, and I've preached to the people at them football clubs that he needs to be on the pitch to show what he's got. He doesn't need to be on the pitch to be and be told what he hasn't got or what he looks like. That doesn't matter. He needs to produce that. And he's got four goals and two home games. And that's all I'll say. And from your point of view, home comforts. I mean, it's two out of two for you now. Yeah, I said, we joked last week, didn't we? But yeah, listen, at the end of the day, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm really keen to have a clean sheet. And if that meant nil nil, I'd, I'd be happy with that, with, against somebody, but, at this moment in time, it's about getting over the line and how you get over the line sometimes. You've got to just, you just got to be honest in your endeavour and a little bit of quality on a couple of occasions will, will win you a game. I do believe that, you know, that's at any level of the game, that. So, the vast majority of them listen to me the vast majority of the time. When they step out of that and they do their own thing, that's when we look vulnerable, in my opinion. And my opinion is the only one that counts in there. So, from that point of view, I've told them, whether I'm right or whether I'm wrong, I'm right. We got to listen to that. I'm not there. I'm not here to try and make them worse. I'm trying to make them better individuals, and I'm trying to make us a better, more competitive team in the division that we play in. Just on Gold Mateo, obviously needs goals for his own confidence, and and he, he actually the shot he had, which came back off the bar, he needs to do more of that, doesn't he? Because he's got it in his locker. Obviously, you don't say it enough, probably. Um, yeah, some people will look at Gold and think he should do this, this and this. I've told Gold what I want off him. There's only two things I want off him. And I haven't said Gold. I've mentioned Gold. He'll want to score goals because he's a striker. But he needs to be a big presence and a focal point at times for us. And he needs to retain the ball with his back to play. The first game we played here, he was outstanding at both things. Today, he was OK at one, but he was absolutely not at the other one. And it frustrated me, that's all. But lad, look. 
they're like buses. He'll look at Josh, he'll score and he'll get another one. He was unlucky, but he's more likely to score one of them at the minute because of how he thinks he should play the game. If he plays the game the way I keep telling him, he'll score because he'll get between the posts more. Uh, and if he doesn't get between the posts more, he'll get between the benches more because he'll sit next to me. But it was a win, which, which, yeah, yeah, which was going Listen. into a, a very busy period. Well, yeah, my job was to get through the, the round, you know, um, and we did. You know, so we'll be in the hat. That, that was the that was the you know the rallying call before the game. I didn't I didn't have a massive change in, in, my, in my instructions just because the opposition's different. We've attacked three games in the same manner as a staff. We've had three different performances. Uh, like I said, whoever, whatever the situation or why the pitch is in the state that it is, is it's there. It's something we can't control as players and staff. So we've got to deal with that now. Every other game, probably we're going to be on it. So we've got to, we've got to, we've got to get better on that surface with the game that we can be most effective with. That makes sense. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> and with the pack schedule coming up, is there any light at the end of the tunnel as far as extra bodies being available? You know, the, the injured guys. Yeah. Um, good news in that front. In that both, or all of the three, uh, Arthur, Maka, and uh, Lewis, or Louis will be back into full training on Monday. So with the, hopefully with a full week of training, they should be available for me against Notts County next Sunday. Sunday. Yeah, I don't know what day we're playing now. It seems to be every day. <laughs> <laughs> but I know it's next Sunday. So we're going to have a slightly different week this week, but we'll be in, you know, and we'll be working. Well, I'll be working over when I walk in there on next week already. The players will start on Monday morning. It is, it is busy. Is it a, a, a period you're looking forward to? Though? Yes, it's, it's brutal is what it is. I mean, to turn round in 48 hours at this level of the game is tantamount to mental, as far as I can see. And then to turn around in another 72 hours after that, for us, and we're the only team who seems like we're doing that to help Chesterfield, as far as I can see, because there's no advantage to us to do that. Um, but that was already arranged before I came to the club, so we have to get on with it. Like I said, I will use that term. It is a brutal schedule for the lads. And with the world we live in, you know, I've, there's four of six Premier League games off of league today, and I was unseen in the Football League. If something doesn't interrupt our programme, I'll be flabbergasted, I'll be honest with you. But we've got to prepare as if, it's, if, if they're all on. Um, so, like I said, I said it to you when I walked through the door, I've never asked them to do anything to win them one game, and we've won two out of our three, so we're doing okay. We've got now Notts County, we'll not be thinking about Grimsby. We might be doing things behind the scenes with the medical people and the sports science guys, but me and the staff will be planning what we would like to happen, but ultimately we're all in to win against Notts County, that's all we can do. How, how do you eradicate these errors at the back? Because, or how do you get the players to eradicate the errors at the back? Well, they just have to listen and, and, and make better individual decisions at times. These aren't, they're not bad lads, they're not. They're not arrogant, they've got not got attitude, they, they, they want, I believe they want to learn, they want to cut. They've heard an age, most of them, where they still, if they think they're complete as footballers, then they're sadly mistaken. Then, you know, there, there's not many in there that I think, or even at their peak yet, apart from the goalkeeper, obviously, who's 35, but other than him, there's, there's nobody over 27 year old. So these lads aren't even at their peak of whatever level they'll get to. So I believe that, I've said it, they're coachable and I can make them better. And as a group, they're definitely coachable. and. I already think we've made them more competitive, but we can make them more competitive and we make them better, more efficient. That's what I want to say, more efficient. And Josh Barrett has now four goals in a week. He's now the club's leading scorer. Does that tell another story as well? Um, yeah, but uh, it's, it's, like, it's like if a team concedes a hell of a lot of goals, it's not just the goalie's fault. If the team don't score a lot of goals, it's not always just the striker's fault, because how do you service that striker? We give Josh, you can see, I give Josh what I do, therefore the team does, they give him a little bit of licence to not do certain things as long as he does that. But he's come to see me just now and said, look, like, there's nowhere near it today. Well, yeah, I know that, but you've scored me two goals, so I, I, you're not going to get any you know, bad mouthing off of me. Um, and that's like, as long as, as, long as everybody realises what their role is and what I want from them, that is a part of the collective, I'm happy. Because if they give me everything, I can't ask them to give them more than they can give me. Sometimes I think they, there's just one or two because they're confident lads, probably, or because they've never been told otherwise, that they make decisions that don't suit my style. They might suit the other manager's style, that's fine. It's not, I'm not right and wrong, but I'm right now because I'm here. So from that point of view, it's just a case of them, I know I speak with a funny accent, 
none of them do, <laughs> but they need to translate what I'm saying into their spiel. Because the kids, they're young lads, some of them, they speak very different to me, very different. So I'm probably saying things that are maybe a little bit politically incorrect at times, but that's how I talk and it stays in there. If anything ever leaks out of that dressing room, they will be absolutely shut down like a bloody, <laughs> like a mouse trap. So, like I said, I'm happy, I'm very happy. I'm happy in the job, I'm happy with the result, and I'm happy with the whole performance now, but I probably never will be. I'll always want something a little bit better. But listen, it's difficult for these lads, you know. Like I said, this place should and could be rocking, and it will be at some stages against Notts County. I'm sure we'll have nearer 2,000 than 1,000 in there. And that's a proper atmosphere. The lads on the far side and the fans are showing that I heard them singing, we've got well in back. Now, I, listen, I've only been here a week. It's, nothing's changed dramatically, but somebody over there is seeing something that they weren't seeing two weeks ago because I didn't hear that last week. So from that point of view, like I said to you, if they like what they're seeing, because we're winning, and like I said, it's not always pretty, but we're winning. Bring your mate next time, bring your mate's mate as well. And just get them back, get the town on side. And I tell you what, this club can go on, it can go on. I was going to ask you about exactly that, about getting the place rocking, yeah. because I think seven days ago, you mentioned about you've been here and seen it. I have. And, and heard it noisy. Yeah. And a lot of things, it's between the ears, isn't it? You know, not watching and playing football, if you get the mentality right. Yeah. I mean, everybody has an opinion as to why, or what, or who is responsible for the crowd being like that. Ultimately, listen, I'm a football fan as well as a football man. And if your team's winning, I can tell you now, people who are, what you call hovering, whether they're coming or not, they'll start coming. So, you know, we've won two, we won two Saturdays in a row at home. I don't know if we can do any more than that for a fan. So whether we're playing well or not playing well, we're winning games at home again. So from that point of view, like I said, please come in your droves. We'd love to see you, we'd love to have you behind us. And they get, they're going to give them what they've got. That's what, that's what I can promise. You think that next game against Notts County will be a, 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 an opportunity to, I'd love to get it all going? Well, I'd love to think so. I mean, look, it's Boxing Day. Everybody's probably had a little bit more turkey than they should have done. A bit of exercise, get their lungs, clear their pipes, go and have a sing song and what have you. Yeah, I would love to see it rocking. Really would. I like your Boxing Day planning, party planning. <laughs> <laughs>